My God. In this week's episode of All Pueblo Eats, will this chef cook up something that Chef Gordon has never had before? Today, I'm with one of the worst chefs I've ever seen. Hi, I'm Meg, and today I'm going to be making sloppers. The chef claims she's making a slopper. But is that a sandwich? Yes, chef. You don't use the whole bun? No, chef. Does it have green chili in it? Yes, chef. You're making soup. This is green chili. Half a bun. Being a Pueblo tradition requires the use of the Pueblo chili. While Gordon and I were in town, we perused for a pair of Pueblo peppers. My God. obvious that there's a problem here. This chili, it's watery. It's a family recipe. Just because it's called a slopper doesn't mean you throw slop on a plate. Yes, chef. So take this pumpkin. It's still going to be chopped up for ingredients, but when I select it, I look for balance, symmetry, and flair. What do you think gets picked up in this kitchen? The temperature seems correct to me, Chef. This looks to temperature? This is raw. This is effing raw! Will Gordon Ramsay finally enjoy a meal that somebody else cooked? Or will this kombucha crazed chef drive him to the edge? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alton Brown, the world's famous chef. And today, on this week's edition of All Eats Pueblo, we will be making a fine New York strip steak. 
We'll start on day one with the fine cut of steak right here. We will coat it with some sea salt. To do the will of the Lord, he edges too. So I point him in the right direction. First Nick had been adopted as a child. And my secret recipe, a little bit of au jus. traditional family growing up. Ernest was special. Industry was his heartbeat. You have know, heard the term that he'd give you a shirt off his back a lot of times the other line, but this was one guy that would give you his last. He was awesome. The 1990, Ernest captures the attention of 26-year-old Emma Judge. A vibrant Wrote that in real good. A small town in the Mississippi Delta. While in Pueblo earlier this morning, I happened to peruse a couple of Pueblo peppers. We will be using these in our recipe later on. For now, we'll put this fine cut of steak in the refrigerator to chill. And this is Dave Barracy. And uh, to talk about the worst chef in Pueblo, I would have to go back to the days when I was a young man washing dishes at the Pueblo Country Club. Now, a friend of mine, Chris, and I were washing dishes one night, and they were having a, a wedding reception, big fancy wedding reception, and we had a couple of chefs there at the Pueblo Country Club, and one of them was Willie, and Willie was very temperamental, and one night at this reception, my friend Chris, Willie tells him to bring over to him this big chunk of meat that was sitting on a counter. So my friend Chris is taking the meat over to Willie and he trips on one of those metal grates that are on the floors of, of some restaurants. He trips on this grate. This chunk of meat goes flying through the air. It's rolling on the floor. Well, Willie goes all kombucha crazy. He grabs a cleaver and he is chasing my friend Chris around the corner, uh, past the time clock, and, and, and Chris runs out the door into the parking lot. And that, I would have to say, was the worst chef in Pueblo that I can recall. Well, I'll let you know next week how this steak turns out, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this edition of All Eats Pueblo, and we shall see you next time. Thank you very much. Purple cotton, leafed tapestry, and worn burgundy wood where we sit at the edge of the kitchen a gray dog muffled on the back porch. Only the kombucha ferments in the brown burnished jar. Ginger, lemon, yellow as the inside of the Anaheim pepper. Oh, hello and welcome. Come on in to my Coca-Cola kitchen. Oh, well look at these lovely peppers I picked up at the local grocery store. Peppers. Look at these scrumptious, thick skin, perfectly green peppers. While in town, we perused a pair of Pueblo peppers. What is the big fuss about these Pueblo peppers? Please tell me. Let's take a moment now and see what the fuss is about these peppers. Look at that color. Smell that aroma. I think I'm going to put it in my next pot of stew. 
I'll be right back. You gotta get the rest of the ingredients. The waxy skin from stem to tip, thick, juicy, stuffed with cheese and smothered with green chili. I want a burnished red pepper, what peeks up through an equinox in the color of winter solstice. Hi there! I'm Wolfgang Punk. That's uh, P-U-N-K-N. I'm a future megastar on YouTube and TikTok, and this is the start. We're going to tackle the most wonderful things about pumpkin pie. The ridges of the pumpkin descend to the blossom that brushes the ground as if a broom in a factory where pies are baked and the scent waffles out on the wind in a neighborhood of cars jumped in the front yard. Now, there's one thing though about pumpkin pie. Everybody else's pumpkin pie, it's just pumpkin. You know what I mean? There's something one note about it, but not my pumpkin pie. And I oftentimes use, frankly, the pumpkin from the store in the can, and also another thing you could do is, because this is also orange, right? I mean, really, it's so great with pumpkin pie. Squash, this is crookneck squash. And when you combine the two, oh, ho, 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 your Aunt Sally will have a conniption. Aunt Sally loves her crookneck squash, the way the neck rounds to belly, as if looking out over the reservoir in a storm, wind whipping as the river rushes to the dam, the underside of waves orange in the descending sun. Now what if we put in two cans of sauerkraut for every one of pumpkin? That would really add zest. And if there's anything they want, you will infuse your pumpkin pie with tuna. Now, tuna in pumpkin pie is just the most delicious thing that could possibly be. <laughs> now, finally, we come to the piece de resistance. Now, this is Vlasic brand, but if you use any brand of chopped dill pickles, Mix it in with the pumpkin pie filling. You will find that your pumpkin pie is so scrumptious. It's going to replace apple pie as the most American thing, really. <laughs> Even though it's kind of German, maybe, when you come right down to it. And that's okay. Now, we come to Betty Crocker cookbook. This cookbook, I have to tell you, I can't, I can't follow this cookbook. The way it wanders off the counter, falls on the floor, opens its spine as if in a kombucha crazed delirium. Ah, so delicious. Well, I think we've come to the end of part one. You know, this is going to be just a whole series of beautiful, wonderful, you're going to love all of these cooking shows I'm going to give for you. <laughs> but now we have to cut it off because I have ingredients to get for part two and they're out in the garage. So thanks so much for coming. I love you guys. Mwah!